thank you for the uh, opportunity to talk briefly about uh, our work on COVID-19 at our Texas Medical Center, Baylor College of Medicine and Texas Children's. We're taking on COVID-19 on multiple aspects, including its role as a health disparity. But one of our big contributions is for vaccine development. Our Center for Vaccine Development for the last 20 years has focused on low cost global health vaccines, especially for parasitic infections, such as Chagas disease, Leishmaniasis, and Schistosomiasis. But now uh, we've also had over the last 10 years a coronavirus vaccine program in collaboration with the New York Blood Center, where we have focused on recombinant protein uh, vaccines that include the, re the receptor binding domain of uh, the spike protein for uh, SARS-1 that emerged in 2003 with uh, MERS coronavirus. And now for this year, we've been uh, producing the receptor binding domain of the uh, COVID-19 uh, virus, the SARS coronavirus type two. Uh, so we, uh, once we uh, obtained the sequence uh, from Chinese scientists who are putting up the sequences in BioArchive in January, we moved pretty quickly to uh, produce the uh, SARS-2 coronavirus receptor binding domain uh, in uh, Pichia pastoris, uh, a methanol utilizing yeast. And we picked that for two reasons. One, our experience with SARS and MERS found that when we use this yeast receptor binding domain, we can induce high levels of virus neutralizing antibody and without the uh, eosinophilic immune enhancement uh, that was seen with full length spike proteins or vector virus vaccines in our laboratory animal constructs. So the receptor binding domain approach was uh, focused primarily because it appeared to remove uh, any type of uh, immune enhancing uh, epitopes. Uh, and that was proved to be very successful for our COVID-19 uh, approach. The other reason we like it is because by using a yeast-derived system, this is the same approach used to make the recombinant hepatitis B vaccine that's made uh, locally uh, in Brazil and Cuba and Indonesia and India, Bangladesh and other countries. So the hope would be that as a receptor binding domain vaccine, it would be a low cost uh, global health vaccine. So we prepared it. Uh, we showed uh, that it induced virus neutralizing antibodies in a mouse system and then a non-human primate system. And now we've uh, licensed this technology to Biological E, Bio-E in, uh, in Hyderabad, India, one of India's big vaccine producers. And now they're scaling up to produce 1 billion doses uh, of the vaccine. So this is quite exciting for us because we think it'll provide a low cost uh, alternative uh, for some of the other uh, COVID-19 vaccines that seems to be inducing very high levels of virus neutralizing antibody T cell responses, potentially is an uh, alum formulation in combination with uh, other immunostimulants, uh, including potentially CPGs to give a, a balanced immune response. And so far this has uh, gone uh, really well. And we're worried. We're worried about uh, access of COVID-19 vaccines to low and middle income countries in Latin America and Africa and South Asia. And uh, we think having a low cost recombinant protein vaccine that uses the same technology as a hepatitis B vaccine that can be made for a dollar or less per dose uh, offers a lot of promise to solve uh, this huge issue around global access for COVID-19 uh, vaccines. So thank you for the opportunity to talk and congratulations on your conference. And I look forward to speaking with you more. Uh, some other time, I'd love to come back and uh, discuss uh, the, the other big issue that we're combating, which is this huge anti-vaccine movement that I've been involved in fighting uh, for many years. And unfortunately, we have now our US anti-vaccine movement now expanding into Europe, into Germany, France, and the UK, and would love to discuss with you about issues about how to solve that problem as well. So thank you so much.